What qualifies as a strategic industry? Defense, yes, also space exploration, maybe even steel and metal. But what about news media? Your newspapers, magazines, and television channels, do they qualify as a strategic industry? Britain seems to think so. The government has announced a new policy. It will ban foreign regimes from owning UK newspapers and magazines. Why did London need this policy? Because the UAE was looking to buy British papers, specifically two of them, The Telegraph and The Spectator. And why were they selling? Reports say The Telegraph owners have a lot of debt, some one and a half billion dollars of it. A UAE investment firm has agreed to clear that. In exchange, they wanted to take over the newspaper, complete Emirati control. But the UK lawmakers opposed it. Around 100 of them wrote a letter opposing the takeover. That's when the government stepped in. They formulated this new ban on ownership. The next step is for the parliament to pass it. Shouldn't be a hassle, though, because the opposition Labour also supports it. So now we know where the UK draws the line. Football clubs are fine. Real estate is fine. Retail chains are fine. But news media is not. Of course, there's a political angle here. The Telegraph is a favorite of conservative leaders, so they want it to remain British. Well, they've got their wish. Because the UAE's takeover attempt has been halted, the Telegraph has now appointed a new chairman. His job is to deal with the fallout. Mission accomplished here. But this controversy also raises bigger questions. Do foreign governments and investors own media assets elsewhere? Are there rules to stop it? And if not, what is the impact? Let's look at Britain first. Three firms dominate 90% of their newspaper market. One of them is News UK, owned by American billionaire Rupert Murdoch. He, owns, he also owns Fox News in the US. So Murdoch controls one third of Britain's newspaper market. He publishes a number of magazines like The Sun and The Times. Other examples are The Independent and The Evening Standard. Both were acquired by a Russian holding company, one that was founded by a former KGB agent. So pretty close to Kremlin. Across the Atlantic in the US, it's a billionaire's game. Most publications are owned by America's richest, but there are a few exceptions, like the New York Times. In 2008, Mexican billionaire Carlos Slim helped them out. This was during the financial crisis. Slim loaned NYT around $250 million. In exchange, he got around 8% stake in the company. In 2015, he bought more shares. Slim doubled his stake to almost 17%. He became the NYT's largest shareholder. Since then, he's offloaded some of that. And that's the situation in the US. What about India? India does allow foreign investment in news media, but there are limits. Major changes were introduced in the year 2000. Up to 26% foreign investment was allowed in print media. In news broadcasting, it was 20%. And non-news outlets, 49%. Non-news media. So the message was clear. Foreign money is welcome, but the control must remain with India. In 2006, these limits were, were tweaked. FDI in news channels, foreign direct investment in news channels was increased from 20 to 26 percent. Non-news channels were permitted 100 percent. Another change was made in 2015. FDI in news channels was increased again from 26 to 49 percent. Both print and digital media have a lower limit, only 26 percent. Now, foreign investment has brought in a lot of money, even in the information and broadcasting industry. The FDI in 2023 was almost 3,700 crore rupees. It was a 230% jump than the year before. And this money does help, especially at a time when the media landscape is changing. Having said that, there are challenges. For starters, what if foreign ownership leads to bias? It's a real possibility in the media, especially when foreign governments buy a stake. Let's say the UAE succeeded in buying the Telegraph. What would stop them from appointing favorable editors or publishing puff pieces on the UAE? Nothing. Another issue is national security. The media can influence public opinion, maybe on a new trade deal or a new set of sanctions or an investment project. So having a foreign owner can be a conflict of interest. Does that mean a ban is necessary? Well, curbs and limits also work fine. Yes, strategy and security are involved here. But that can't be an excuse to choke an industry. As always, a middle ground is the answer.